we are back. This is Development Dynamics. We are documenting and telling the stories of leaders and practitioners in the social impact field. And today's guest is Steve, who at this stage, um, you've now started working with Little Angels Network, mm -hmm. and you're connecting the resources that you're earning from there to support a bit of the work that you're doing in the community um, outside of sustenance. So um, how does, what's your experience like with Little Angels Network? Uh, Little Angels, as we are focusing on adoption, both local and international adoption. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you say international adoption is like um, the adopters are. Yes, so <laughs> okay. international adoption means um, people from outside the country mm -hmm. coming to adopt mm. from Kenya. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was also a lot of changes happening in that a streamlining just from policy mm. level. Mm. Um, at an international level also with the local government because mm -hmm. there's always been issues of child trafficking mm. and stuff like that. Mm. So that's when I was I was in that space mm -hmm. when all that change was happening. Mm. So I, I was a case officer. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was my first job. Mm. I'm straight from campus. Um, I'm doing this. Of course, the team in Madare Lepta mm. s sending finances to just assist. Mm where I could, they are running the thing. Mm -hmm. I used to come every weekend. Oh, you are situated outside? I was, yeah. At, so initially when we, we began, I was based in Nairobi, mm -hmm. but then they posted me to Kisumu to help coordinate the Western, the, we used to call it the Western region, because mm. there was a lot of local adoptions mm -hmm. happening. Mm. So it was an eye opener, because mm. now I'm, um, I mean, it's a different space. Mm. I'm learning about adoption. And as a case officer, what's your duty? So my case officer meaning I, I would go, um, if someone wants to adopt, mm -hmm. the first thing is to figure out if you've, you are qualified to adopt. Mm -hmm. So there are certain criteria that we look at that mm. are laid out in the mm -hmm. law. Mm. So we do our investigations, mm -hmm. just make sure you've qualified. Mm. And then the next step would be just to make sure that the child is a fit mm. for you. Mm. Um, so I would then do the report, present mm. it to the committee. Mm -hmm. Once that's approved, then that would go to court mm -hmm. and I would be responsible of presenting that in court. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> that's an interesting... Uh detail detail of that were you able to are there cases that stand out for you if, from your time there um yes mm -hmm. so one is just how sometimes people can be desperate mm. to get children mm. and um and the lengths that they would go to because mm. you'd have like there's a case where this couple really needed a baby and they had mm. tried and mm. they couldn't. Mm. So eventually they just went to this hospital mm. asking, are there babies that no one wants? Because wow. before adoption, before this space, um, there was a lot of gray areas mm. previously. Because mm. sometimes you have kids who've been abandoned, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of those ones will end up in children institutions. Mm -hmm. But before you'd be, you'd almost find cases, the way you, you, you find a child abandoned, you take them to the cop, and then mm. like, wherever I can, I'm told to stay with the baby mm. until mm. we find mm. the, the, the owner mm. or somewhere where to take the child. Mm. There, there, there used to be more incidences like those ones mm. back then. Mm. So this couple w goes to this OC asking, mm. Mm. can we... Um, any child available. Yeah, any child mm. available, mm. And, and can we just take them off their hands? So Because they don't know that adoption is even an option because mm. not too many people know there's a process mm. to it. Mm. But before they did that, mm -hmm. at that time, um, they were trying to appear as though they are pregnant. Mm. So mm. she's just layering up. Mm. So every, after every month, quote unquote, her pregnancy is growing, mm. knowing by month nine, we'll go to Hosea and, and come back with the baby. Wow. So that was, um, you, you would hear of cases like those ones, mm. but that was one that mm. I, 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 I had, I interacted mm. with mm. that was very interesting. So you'd see them, so ask us in the office, she would of course not come to her office mm. looking pregnant because mm. you'd be like, yeah. Mm. Mm. But then when you're peeping out, you actually see them mm. like clearing Wrapping, up or removing. Yeah. Oh. And 
it's sad. It, it mm. was very heartbreaking. Mm. But like with that specific couple, once we told them what the process is, mm. they realized, because the, the hospital sent them to us. Mm. And so we took them through the process and just also how do you accept this child as your own mm. um, and not pretend that, because people hide adopting. Mm. They, they, they don't want people to know this child is adopted because yeah. there was that thing, this is a child that you bought. They're mm. not really mm -hmm. your child. Mm. So there were a lot of cases like those mm. ones. Mm. Um, but just how people were open to mm. giving, to get it, to bringing children into their homes. So you had that category mm. where they wanted a baby. Mm -hmm. But you also had another category which I also encouraged me. Mm. Initially it was a lot from the international adoptions, but mm. then we started seeing more Kenyans mm -hmm who have their own kids, everything, mm. but they just want to make a difference in a child's life. Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm adopting mm. for this specific reason. Mm. And they would come to us mm. and say, yeah, we mm. always wanted our third born mm. to be adopted. Uh, Such cases. Mm, mm. Yeah. When you say um, the stereotype is that they've been bought, is there a fee that is ever transacted? Yes, there's, there's a fee, mm. but it's um, legal mm -hmm. and, and it's set by government. Mm. So. Okay. I, I do not remember the figures, mm -hmm. but for local adoptions, it was something very affordable. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, it's, it's just for fee. processing. The just for processing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And um, <laughs> it, was it an easy fit for you to be in that space, given that it's it's close to some extent in terms of meeting the needs of uh, the most vulnerable, but it's also a very different space. And then you also work in <laughs> in a, in you know far away how was how was that now um for you as an individual initially i was also struggling with um because there's a lot of bad things that i said about that space like mm. buying children and trafficking children mm. why you adopt but then hide your identity mm. um hide the identity of the child from people so that they don't know they're adopted mm. So I, I wasn't so sure, but just seeing the impact and just being in that space where you now see kids grow up mm. and just the dedication of a lot of the lawyers mm. and the parents and the social workers and the judges mm -hmm. just to make this thing work and mm. work well. Mm. The judges were extremely protective of Kenyan children. Mm. That really encouraged me. That's good to know. So that knowing that in a space that can look very murky, mm. it's actually possible mm. to do this the right way. Mm. To do things right. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so how long do you stay there and and why do you leave? <laughs> so I'm in Kisumu, mm -hmm. oh. uh, engaged <laughs> to my fiance Joyce, she's in Nairobi, yeah. and then my heart is still in Madhara. So mm. every weekend I'm on a bus to Nairobi, mm. then um, back on mm. Monday. Mm and I'm learning and I'm growing and the work is making a difference, but my heart is really in Madare. So mm. one day I decide mm. um, I'm done. Like mm. my, my heart just gets to a place like, I feel like I'm supposed to move back. Mm. Mm. And I'm not really tired. Mm. It's just like, I feel like a season is over. Mm. So I go pack. So I'm not even resigned. I'm not told anyone. I just pack, I put my stuff together and then I'm like, why am I doing this? And I think I go out, watch a movie or something, come back. And the following day, I know for sure I'm supposed to leave. Yeah, to mm. leave. Mm. So I come, it's a weekend, I come visit. I think I asked for an off day or something. And on that day, I'm in Madare. Uh, my dad is hosting a team mm. that has come to us to focus. Focus is fellowship of Christian unions. Mm. Um, in schools. Mm -hmm. So they've hosted this team through those connections. It's a team that they are hosting mm. together with a pastor from Deliverance in Karasukari. So they are visiting Madare. Mm -hmm. So I, I met them. Um, wasn't planned. Mm. And then I give this. My dad is like, why are you around? It's cool. Just talk to them about the projects mm. and Madare. And it's something that I had done a couple of times before just with visitors. Mm. So I give this talk. Mm. And, and I talk about Lepta and, and I just talk about our philosophy, which was um, something I, I tell people who visit those um, like um, Madare for the first time. Mm -hmm. It's easy to see the, the poverty, mm. to smell it, to hear it. Mm. But 
try look beyond that. Mm. Just don't live there like, oh, this is so sad, mm. and um, how can we help? Because mm. I, I, I don't believe in selling desperation. Desperation, right? Mm. Um, it the reality it for some people it works, mm. but I, I I always feel like it's because these are people I'm in relationship with, mm. Mm. yeah. So I talked about how there is treasure mm. in Madare, mm. and just like normal treasure, it's buried. Mm. Sometimes you don't see it, mm. so it's layered um, with kids not doing well in school, mm. with brokenness, mm. crime, all these layers, just mm. lack of food. But it's that's not what we are trying to solve mm. necessarily. It's mm. how do we go through this to get to the treasure, mm. so that the potential, so that because if we touch that, then this person will change everything mm. that we think mm. ought to be different or that they are struggling with. Mm. So I, I give that talk, and then one of the ladies after the talk just runs up to me. Mm. Her name is Tiffany, and she's super excited because mm. she's come from the US, knew she's supposed to do something in Kenya, mm. Mm. but had no idea what. Mm. A different a cup, a, a dif uh, visited a couple of projects, mm. but now we connect. Mm. And we talk, we exchange emails. So now I'm in the process of thinking of resigning and mm. what that will look like. Mm. Then she's thinking of how do we set up in Kenya. Mm. And I ended up being the first country, their first hire, the country mm. director for mm. that project. Um, mm. It's called the Dignitas mm. Project. Mm. And we do, initially we, we just knew we want to do something around education. Yeah. Yeah. What a divine connection. So uh, Tiffany is here as a, as a student, uh, stu student union? Through that organization, yeah. that, that was our link. So these guys mm. wanted to come to Madare. Mm -hmm. So they're being hosted by a pastor, Pastor Angombe from Deliverance Church, mm -hmm. Kasukari, mm. and a guy called Kimathi mm. Kamenchu. Mm -hmm. They then called Focus to mm -hmm. figure out, do you guys know a pastor in Madare mm. who was a church we can visit? Mm. And so all they wanted to see was the one, when she came in, the idea was not to look for a project to start. She knew she wanted to work in Kenya. Okay. So they, they, they were in the process of starting an organization, Dignitas, mm -hmm. together with Bobby Lee. Mm. So they are the two co-founders. Mm -hmm. And both of them were on that trip. Uh -huh. But Bobby then was a pastor. Mm. So his church was visiting mm. this other pastor. Mm. And then that's how the connection mm. yeah, yeah, was made. So this weekend, do you then resign or what, what happens to So now the conversation, so mm -hmm. we, we speak to, we, we, we have that conversation. And on that day, my dad also, um, I mean, they're about to board the bus to leave, um, talks to Tiffany and tells her, um, I'm getting old and you guys are young and you, you need to fill my shoes. Mm. And that remains with Tiffany. Mm. So she's thinking through this, so we've connected. She's like, oh yeah, I, there's a story of hope here, um, of just potential. That is what really attracted her. Mm. So we continue to have conversations mm -hmm. after that. Had they come up with the name Dignitas? Yes, Dignitas, mm -hmm. which is um, Dignity. I think they had already, mm -hmm. yeah. So they, so, that, mm -hmm. so basically they, mm -hmm. they tell me about this mm -hmm. um, before they leave Kenya. So we're just, and then after mm -hmm. that they leave, we, we exchange emails mm -hmm. and eventually decide, um, yeah, let's work together. So mm -hmm. then I now transit from um, social, from my work in Kisumu, yeah. I come back. How was that transition? Was it hard or you, you this what you it were was, ready? I was ready. Yeah. Uh, that, I was definitely mm. ready. It was time. Mm. Yeah, it was time. But there was no gap. Like it was just move <coughs> from this. You've already been kind of doing this. Yes. It's just na now to take on. Yeah. Fully. It's just that now we're also trying to figure out what exactly will we do in the education space. Mm -hmm. Do we set up a school? Yeah. Do we, because there's so many things that you can do. Mm. And so um, we we started listening mm -hmm. and learning, and we mm -hmm. we um, conducted a needs based asset assessment mm -hmm. where we just worked with young people from mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. and went and spoke to parents just mm -hmm. to figure out what what are the needs. Mm -hmm. um, visited Ghana to do some learning around the same space. Mm -hmm. Just basically listened, 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 listened. Mm -hmm. um, did our homework. Mm -hmm and then decided um, we'll focus on teacher training, okay. teacher development. That would be the unique thing that Dignitas does. That was the biggest gap then mm. um, within the education space mm. in places like Madare, mm. where you have 
teachers teaching, but they are not trained as teachers. Mm. There was a lot of that. Interesting because it, when you now connect the dots backwards a bit, the work that you had mentioned uh, you were doing at Nile where a, a need emerged and a carer became sort of like the teacher. Yes. So it, it's not like, like they set out to be teachers. They are probably just carers or people who are serving in the community. Then they end up was oh, then, yeah. Yes, so yeah. in your listening um, and deep diving into into conversations, what what would be the missing link to make it to make the training not happen? Like, is it because they do not? Um, why is there no that training? So first, you'd find, because these are low-cost schools, mm -hmm. um, they can barely afford to even pay anyone. So you'd find, one, a lot of guys just fresh from high school who are not mm -hmm. been trained, yeah. um, but they do have education, mm -hmm. and, 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 and they do a lot of good. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. the things that they're able to, mm -hmm. to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But they do not have the resources to go to, for further learning. Mm. Like it takes a while before they yeah. gather those resources, mm. but they are still in class and mm. they are still teaching kids. Mm. So there was a lot of that, mm -hmm. um, or where you find even though someone is might be older, if they were properly trained, they, it would almost require for them to be paid more and mm. the school can't afford that. Mm. So a lot of it is an issue of resources mm. more than anything mm. else. Mm. And um, or, or you also have people who just have a passion for kids mm. and 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 so they almost have a natural inclination inclination to, to, to be, yes to to to, 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 to be teach, a teacher to be mm. a teacher mm. but they've not been formally mm. trained so we were just mm. coming in we saw it as a huge need mm. and we were just coming in to mm. see how do you work with those teachers that are already mm. teaching most of uh, what so what would what was the offer that you then would do like would you how, how did it start to form, basically? Like, uh, did you recruit a number of teachers, put them in a formal training program? Was, was it hand-holding through? Was it mentorship? What, what became the program? So we, we um, worked with someone from the community. Her name is Lucy. Mm -hmm. um, she, she knew the school. She had been working with in that space mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and so we brought her on board. Mm -hmm. And we just started having conversations with the school heads and with the teachers. Mm. And they're like, there's this gap. And um, the school heads knew mm. that there was a mm. gap. Mm. And so we started bringing in, we recruited a couple of schools. We had a criteria of mm -hmm. schools that we want to work with in terms okay. of number of students, mm. um, how many grades mm. does it have? Because mm. we were also looking for stability. Mm. We were thinking, let's do Madare for, like, say, maybe five years mm. and see how many schools we can do. So mm -hmm. we, we, we um, on the side, started doing school mapping and okay. stuff like that. Mm. And this is happening over a period of months and a few years. Mm. But then brought in the first teachers mm -hmm. and used to meet with them on Saturday mm -hmm. and just have conversations mm. about them as leaders mm. in schools. Right. And the um, Tiffany is... is um, trained mm -hmm. in that space so mm -hmm. she eventually now relocated okay. to Kenya okay. and just started doing the training mm -hmm. and then we brought in other local mm -hmm. experts mm -hmm. and the training would focus more as you, you're saying on their leadership within the, 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 the them viewing themselves not just as information providers to kids yes. but having an opportunity to lead children in their in their development yes, yes. How, how so who would resource that? So Tiffany and Bobby um, initially did most of the fundraising. Mm. Then when we set up the local chapter, um, we brought in Kimathi, mm. who was one of the board members. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of other really good people that are still on the team mm. now came on mm. board mm. As, as, as board members. Mm. Initially, they were just advisors. Mm. Then the relationship just grew. Mm. And we now started getting funding from just sending out proposals, mm. that kind of thing. By this time, though, I, I was also transiting from my role as um, the ED. Mm -hmm. Tiffany took um, over that role, mm -hmm. and then I moved into the role of um, being on the board. Okay, yeah. okay, fantastic. And how does your, <laughs> it's working, Madare, um, with teachers, but you you have a larger heart also for Madare, and there's Lepta, there's 
uh, you're still a pastor at the time, you're almost about to get married. How is that period working with all those things for you? And I think you're still serving, you're still deliberately focusing on young people <laughs> yes, yes. In, in ministry. One of my strengths is I'm able to start and establish things mm. and then step back so mm. that then they're able to run that's their own, right? right? It's good. <laughs> so by, by, by that time, Lepta is running mm. on its own. Mm. And actually, my plan for Lepta was after 10 years to mm. wind it up. And so that's a plan that I had sold to, yeah. to J. King and yeah. the rest of the team. So yeah. now J. King um, is actively running things. Mm. So my plan was equip these guys, mm. work with them for about 10 years, mm. and then let them go. If this thing really works, let them go mm. and also start their own things. Mm. So I've, I'm stepping back. Mm. Um, others are running the, the, mm. the, the program at Lepta. Mm. I'm still involved, I'm, I, up to date, I'm mm. still mm. Um, involved, I still sit on the board, they mm. call me for trainings mm. and stuff, mm. but I don't do, I'm not involved in the day to day. Mm. And so the same thing is now happening at Dignitas, at Dignitas. now mm. Tiffany is the one mm. running it, I'm not on staff, mm. I'm just on the board, mm. but then I step in and assist mm. when mm. required, mm. and I still sit on the board mm. to date. Mm. Um, church. Mm. My parents are the one primarily running it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still able to interact with mm. this, all these mm. things that are happening mm. with a focus on Madhare, mm. but I'm not the one taking the lead mm. necessarily. So it, it just depends on the, mm. on the season. Mm. And so by this time, then now I transit because my parents are also setting up um, our children's home. Because mm -hmm. as kids have grown, we moved out. <laughs> Um, the need is there, mm. and my, it's something that my mom had in her heart for many, many years. Mm. And then post-election has happened, uh -huh. so there's, that's the number of orphans mm. has increased. Mm. There's, there's a lot of that within Madare, mm. and so she takes in mm. um, 10 kids to live with, mm. and then later on, another 10 kids, and eventually grows to 24 kids. Mm. But we want it to be like a family. Mm. So we end up having two homes, 12 mm. living with her, mm and my dad, mm. then I took in 12 mm. by myself. That's why I have 15 children. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I feel like that part is loaded with many things. And um, the first part is just the identification. Is, was, it, was it the identification of the, the, the needs that the children who would then be taken up? So your, your parents are now empty nesters. Yeah. All of you, including your last born sister, you're probably not at is, home. Yes, yeah? she's about to leave, yes. So there's, there's, there's space in their heart, but also in their house. Yes, <laughs> yes. For, <laughs> for, 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 for a few more people, and maybe not grandchildren necessarily, but a few more, because they, they are inclined towards giving and towards caring. Um, and you are involved in these discussions with them from the get-go. Yes. Because you've also had this other linkage with, the, with with brothers now at this time you can say experience wise you've worked with children you've worked with children in various circumstances what linkages do you see like how are the dots connecting for you from what you've been doing and now this thing this need that is starting to be established still when it was the one home yeah so my mom before we started that home um, it's called sanctuary of hope mm -hmm. she was working for a different home, mm -hmm. just as a nurse. Mm. Um, and so she used to serve there. Mm. So there was there was really that connection. So mm. we, we are thinking, we are having conversations in the evening and stuff, and she's just telling us about her day and just her experiences. And then post-election happens. And so this is a community we've been working in. So these kids are not strangers. There's already a relationship. And then this crisis happens. Mm. And then um, out of partnership with a lady called um, Debbie mm -hmm. Lee, um, who used to bring a missionary students mm. for years, we used to host them together mm. with their husband, mm. Brian. And then our work in Madare, mm. it just was almost like a natural fit. It mm. was, um, we also had another very good friend, her name is Colleen. Mm. They just came together, my mom, Colleen and Debbie, mm -hmm. and we were like, 
we can respond. Mm. We, we, we think we can respond. Mm. So mm. Colleen is connected to an organization in the was connected to an organization in the US and still is mm. um, called Hope's Promise, mm -hmm. and they do adoptions mm. and they do um, orphan care. Mm. So it was just a fit. Mm. And Colleen is a relationship that we had met before when mm. she was adopting. Uh, kids Kenya. from Kenya. She has two yeah. adopted kids from Kenya. Yeah. So these, it's was already it through Little Angels? Not or? through Little okay. Angels. Mm -hmm. um, it was just through a different mm. organization. But now, now there's relationships. Mm. So when the need came up, um, there was already almost like a net built mm. to, to carry this. I, 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 the, the, the one string that, that connects in, through all these stories, development through relationships. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it's happening in every single way. A relationship yeah. from some time back is connecting to, um, to something. And now you're doing many things. Um, I mean, you're still connected to th these other things. Do you f then begin to focus on the home like as a, as a main thing? So now I focus on two things, the church, mm -hmm. just running the school mm -hmm. and the projects mm -hmm. and the home. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not yet living with the kids, though later on that becomes a part of it, yeah. but it's family. Mm. So it, it doesn't feel like an institution, right? Because yeah. you live literally in the same space mm. and mm. They are, um, share the same mm. meals and the mm. same kitchen and mm. everything. That's what you mean by you wanted to make it a family yes. for them, yes. the experience. Um, so. Speaking of family, <laughs> you also at some point, uh, gave, I mean, I think we left off when, when you were in Kisumu, you were, you were engaged? Dating? Yes, I was engaged. Mm -hmm. I come back, yeah. and then we get married, uh, well, not too long, like maybe two years. During your work at Dignitas period? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'm just starting off with Dignitas. So all mm. of these things are happening. Mm. Um, actually, it was during that season mm -hmm. when Tiffany was here, because I still have that photo. Mm. They attended my wedding. Mm. So I'm actually about to get married okay. as I'm starting off with Dignitas. Mm. Yeah. How does, does marriage change you? Does it transform you? Does it transform what you want to do? How you do it? <laughs> um, yes. In mm -hmm. Okay, so first, marriage anchors me because mm. I'm, 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 I've done Kisumu, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm setting up projects, mm. but I'm also very, I don't need to get home by a certain time. <laughs> I, can, I, I'm, I can just be where I am yeah. and just serve and do whatever I need to do. Yeah. But now I have to go home <laughs> and, and, and it's different. And now when the, our, our first um, bio child was born, mm. now that makes me even now more grounded. Mm. And I'm also beginning to see the difference between, um, let's say, the school mm -hmm. in Madare mm. that I'm running, mm. and would I take my child to this school? That's cool. Mm. Right? And mm. my wife is born and raised in Madare, mm. so she 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 knows that space. Mm. She she she's um, been through everything mm. that people have been through, mm. and um, my friends. That's, I mean, they are from Azare. Mm. And some of them are coming out. Uh, we've, we're working together, mm. they've started working, mm. but we still feel like this is still our space. Mm. But one of the biggest issues I had for a long time was when people do development work in these spaces, mm -hmm. you almost want to, you've almost, you almost give the bare minimum. Mm which in that space might be amazing. Right. But it's yet not good enough mm. even for yourself. Mm. It's... What does that look <laughs> like? What does the, the, that perspective of bare minimum that's not sufficient, what does it look like? Like, For, for, for example, mm -hmm. um, if, if you have Githeri as mm -hmm. a meal every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. for a child who has no food, mm -hmm. That's, mm. That makes such a difference. But it's not nutritious enough. Exactly. Mm. But would I feed my, my own child that, no. mm. this mm. continuously? Mm. And, so, and there's an issue of resource. And this mm. is initially what I had told my dad mm. that um, we should shut this down. Because mm. I was just feeling like we don't have the resources yeah. to do this. Mm. But he was like, yeah, what happens if okay. we shut this mm. down? Mm. And now I've already begun to see the school grow, resources come, mm. the menu change. Mm. Now it's not Gideri every day. Mm. 
and quality is coming mm. in mm. and so i have that mindset that yeah it's it's better than nothing and and for that child they appreciate it mm. the family mm. loves it mm. absolutely yeah it's making a real Impact. difference right yeah. mm. and, and 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 so there's a place for that mm. but so it's, it's not it's not it's not theology um it's it's not just on paper that in some situations um children will go to school because there's Oh yeah, that's that's just the reality, mm. and sadly, it is the reality up to date. Because I still mm. work in that space, mm. and um, whenever there is food, regardless of what it is, mm. um, the, the enrollment goes up. Mm. Um, I was recently working in a, on a project in Machakos, mm. doing school mapping mm. and stuff, just trying to figure out where guys are at mm. um, before we begin to um, bring different interventions into that space. Mm. And the teachers were just saying even porridge mm. don't even bring anything else mm. if you have resources for porridge mm. that will that's change efficient, everything yeah. so, so that's the bare minimum you're talking about yes mm. but it's bare minimum to you mm. but everything to that other person mm. but i think the difference was i was not just trying to solve a problem of hunger mm. i was trying to invest into their potential mm. Mm. And I was like, this is not enough. Mm. Let's feed them, mm. but let's have a music teacher and let mm. them learn to play violin. Right. Because that's what I want from my child. Mm. I want to feed them, I want to protect them, mm. but I also want them to become everything that they can be. Mm. Mm. So I don't want to settle. Mm. Like, I want to be enough, like, yeah, I fed you, that's enough. Mm. I want you to get the best education possible, mm. to get as many opportunities mm. so that you can become yeah. everything that you already are. You mm. can just flourish. Mm. So that's that's how I was trying to figure out how do we bring this mm. into this mm. space mm. within the constraints of resources, mm. limited resources mm. and stuff like that. Mm. What, what, what kind of, I mean, those are the practical challenges on the ground, but yeah. as you maybe, as you reflect on when you are running Dignitas or when you're also running the programs, both in church, um, in the school, and, and perhaps even in Lepta, what are the challenges that you would now face? Live alone like in the community with like partners, like staff or like people you're working with. What, how was the journey? So first I learned a lot from Tiffany because mm. the word dignitas is connected to the word dignity. Right. And it's every person mm. must, must be treated with dignity. Mm. And she practiced it, mm. whether it's it was a staff member mm whether it was a supplier, mm. whether it was a teacher or a head mm. school head that we were working with, mm. they were all treated with so much dignity mm. that she really ingrained and us. That? Yeah, mm. and, and, and it was real for her. Mm. So if a partner, like we were in meetings where partners had treated our staff members in a way that was not so nice, mm. and that was like, no way, mm. we, we, we cannot have mm. this happen. Because mm. that's the other reality is you'd find a lot of people just because the reality, not everyone really understands the reality of someone who's been raised up in a different environment mm. from you. I, I, I wouldn't even claim to fully mm. appreciate mm. it. Mm. Mm. Um, there are things 20 years later, mm. I'm still yes, coming to appreciate. I'm mm. just like, wow. Mm. Yeah, like, mm. yeah, it blows my mind that you can be in that space and still not see it. Mm. And I also look at things or attitudes that I might have mm. that need to be adjusted mm. as I learn. Mm. But I must be willing to learn. Because mm. mm. whether I like it or not, I will respond to people based on how, what I see. What your perspective yeah. is. And mm. that's why I was constantly, even with whatever teams were visiting, my friends coming into that space, I was like, look at the potential. Because mm. mm. if, if I look at a child who does not have food and I'm, as, I'm certain this guy will become, will change the world in a certain way, mm. I will not treat them as just a child. Yes, I will be. Mm. And I will be patient mm. and I will be willing to mm. work with them for a mm. long time. Because mm. I'm assured of their future. Mm. Mm. as a bright future mm. so we need to be able to see that mm. so you'd find partners who do not really relate to that mm. and we used to go for meetings um because our office was in Madare mm. then mm. um just because of proximity we're mm. working it just makes sense mm. and we used to go into offices and guys have four by four just the, the typical mm. development work that mm. and um it's 
it's necessary mm. in, 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 in some spaces, mm. but we also began to see just the disconnect mm. Mm. and just the gaps mm. between what happens in the office mm. and what in the intervention actually looks like mm. Yeah, mm. on the ground. You've spoken about two things there that are powerful, just as, as lessons, appreciating your own position of power and privilege, which changes perspective, but also remaining cognizant enough to the fact that how you see things may not be the, the way they are, but remaining on a learning curve constantly. Yeah. I think <laughs> anyone who is truly doing development work not as um, to get a paycheck, but as, as like, this is it. Everyone must, including the people who don't think they have power, every one of us must be able to just check ourselves and the power and privilege that we hold and how we can use that mm -hmm. um, to, to, how we can leverage on that to benefit others, but also to remain clear that without constantly learning and adjusting our own values, <laughs> we could be completely misinterpreting what the need is yeah. and bringing our own offerings. Has there been a way you, like what you mentioned that, you know, you, marriage grounded you um, and the fact that um, your lovely wife Joyce, you know, hails from there and would, would, you know, if you're having discussions with her, she, she, she would like bring perspective. What, what, what are the things that you would constantly look at and think, hmm, maybe if I wasn't as rooted on the ground as I am, I would not be appreciating this. Um, first, I, in as much as I tend to do their work for the long term mm -hmm. and just invest in the potential, mm. I, I can also just get lost in the moment mm. and be like, what, what is needed? Do we need 10,000 mm. right now? Let's, let's, just, mm. let's just do this. Let's just mm. solve this problem right here, mm. right now. Mm. But it's not really solving the problem because mm. I've not been in that space. I've mm. not been raised. I, I was raised across the street, mm. but that's, it's a different world, completely mm. different mm. world. Mm. Just crossing the road, mm. the dynamics mm. are different. Mm. So, so Joyce would balance me out and be mm. like, uh -uh, that, that might do more harm. Mm than mm, good mm, and and of mm. course um the long because i've been there in that i was there for a couple of years mm. i was also able to see um oops like there i messed up mm. or that was misinterpreted or this worked out and it looked well mm. but i also like that that side of me would allow me to do things like birthday cakes mm. right that allow hey, it's your birthday let's let's buy cake because mm. that's normal to me mm. And then years later, that person is like, you bought me my first birthday cake and I was 17 or 18. Mm, mm. So you are not even thinking you are helping at all. You are poor, let me buy mm. you a cake. Mm. They're just, we have a relationship For you, it's with your natural. birthday. Yeah. Let's do cake. Mm. And later on, you mm. realize, wow, that had such an impact. They still remember things mm. that you would not remember. Mm. And, mm. I, and vice versa, where... Mm. Um, just things that would happen and just responses from people mm. that they thought were very meaningless to them. Mm. Yet to me, mm. like they meant the Everything. whole world. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. For instance? <laughs> For instance, um, I remember one of the students that um, we trained through LEPTA, mm. where um, they were fresh from high school and now we had a leadership program was now taking mm. root. Mm. And um, sent me an email and bought me two cards. Mm. Um, I think they're called what, ba batik or something, just mm. made like zebras, mm. nini, that I still keep to date. Mm. And they were like, thank you. Mm. And, and just those moments. So for mm. them, they probably forgot about mm. it, mm. but I still hold mm. such things mm. very precious. Mm. And just the fact that they are my friends they yeah. are, and we are still friends. Yeah, yeah there's relationship yeah. and it's legit. Mm. Yeah. So you've mentioned how like very recently your you know mapping schools in machakos um so your work is largely rooted in madari and madari is a you know it's it's as you're saying it's a community where there's hope 
it's also a community where there's a lot of challenges. So you have never quite disconnected with Mathare and maybe never will. <laughs> um, I hope I don't. <laughs> uh, what, what are the other, so how does your work, especially focus there, how does it continue to unveil? We've had, uh, the, the, there's, a, there's the ninth school, there's the fact that you are still um, working with and supporting your, your, your dad with the pastoral work and pastoral care. Um, there is also Lepta, there is also Dignitas. Um, is there any other thing or how do this continue to evolve? So now we move from lep, um, social work stroke Lepta, mm -hmm. then Dignitas, mm -hmm. uh, um, then there is Hope's Promise. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still yeah. a program director mm -hmm. with Hope's Promise. Yeah. And then I pastor the church because my parents have also stepped back now. Mm. Um, some a bit so I pastor the church in Madare called Madare Worship Center. Mm. But I also have founded an organization called Youth Vest. And before, before we move to Youth Vest, mm -hmm. Youth Vest, let's talk about pastoring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At what point do you PK become? Uh, th there's the thread is there. I just want to hear the moment that that, <laughs> that you then become an ordained pastor yeah. and then that this is the work that you do and then we move to Youth Vest. So if we go back, um, mm. I've left, I, I, I taught, um, mm. it's time or time, mm. back in Mazare, mm -hmm. serving, working, mm. and you have a couple of elders approach me mm. and like, you should be a pastor, you should be a pastor. Mm. This is not for my dad. Mm. And I'm fighting it, I'm mm. resisting it. Mm -hmm. The call is there now, mm. my heart is more open. Mm. And like before, mm -hmm. and I know eventually I will, I will just do this thing. Mm. But I don't want to be a pastor because mm. my dad is a pastor. Yeah. Or I don't want to be given that position in that church mm. space because just mm. my parents are pastors. That's a real deliberate, it's, it's a struggle, but it's also a real de deliberate thing for you, right? Yeah. And yeah. As, as you said earlier, it happens with most PKs. Like you want to found, found your own identity. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the other side of it is... Mm. It's a pastor, like it's a serious position, yeah. like it, it has consequences. <laughs> it's a, a positions lot. of leadership is very, leader, um, nations rise and fall on leadership. Mm. And so, and, and it's easy for us to understand that if you have the right leader in government, mm. you can easily see our nation will prosper mm. versus, versus if you have the wrong one. Mm. But you can cascade that to families mm. and organizations, the best performing companies and organizations have the right leadership, right? right? And that's why you have CEOs earning millions because um, they are able to bring that mm. leadership component. Mm. And it's not just them, but mm. leadership mm. affects everything. It's yeah. just a reality of things. And that's mm. why I'm very passionate about leadership. Mm. Mm. And for me, the passion is how do we cascade leadership mm. downwards? Mm. So for me, I was like, I'm about to be given a position of leadership mm. that I must earn. Mm. I don't just to be given to me because who my parents mm. are. Mm. So I resisted it for mm. a long time mm. until I felt for sure mm. um, I've not really earned it, mm. but you are ready to take Yes, this mm. is, I'm not doing this because of my parents mm. and these kids are not calling me to this position mm. because of that association. Of, of that association. Mm. They actually want me to serve mm. in that position. So the, 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 the elders in church approach you so you so what 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 does it look like does it is it like an ordination is it like a yeah, so ceremonial handover yeah, mm -hmm. eventually i get ordained mm -hmm. um, i was ordained by one of our partner churches um, the pastor is called pastor al yeah i'm um, still a very good friend we've mm -hmm. worked with them for mm -hmm. many years now they're mm -hmm. based in colorado mm -hmm. and um so he's the one who mm -hmm. he was visiting mm -hmm. and so we we aligned mm -hmm. yeah the, the, the work of a pastor and the, the reason part of the reason I'm saying we, we, we dwell on that a little is that at the heart of pastoral care and being a pastor is 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 developing the the community that you're entrusted with not just spiritually but <laughs> yeah. uh, even from what the stories that you've told so far as, as from what your father did so um, and as you resisted, maybe part of the re resisting 
um, was because you've seen that development is, 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 is very wholesome, but also part of the accepting is perhaps because you see that this is also an opportunity to, to continue doing that. Does it, does it fast track or what, what, are, what are the, how is the journey of a pastor? Like what's, what's the challenges? What's, what are the ups and downs of, of just being a pastor and leading a community? through the development stages. <laughs> I needed to adjust. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I'm also, uh, first I'm not, I'm, I'm introverted. Hmm. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Very <laughs> introverted, right? Yeah. So having to visit mm. and do conversations mm. and just the, the care side of it, mm. or just like, how, how, do, I, how do I do mm. this? Mm. Um, I'm also very, I like my space mm. in the sense that I was like, now does it mean now people just be visiting my house mm. all the time, that mm. kind of thing. Mm. And a lot of these things were debunked because mm. I don't host as many people as mm. my parents mm. um, used to. Mm. Um, people have accepted me as I am. Mm. And of course, there's the whole thing of dressing mm. uh, <laughs> and, and just a certain lifestyle that is expected of you mm. and I don't I, tr I don't try fit into the box mm. so mm. there was that side of me I was just like I'm mm. never going to change mm. this mm. so I used to do my jeans mm. and my t-shirts mm. and stuff mm. and people would kind of frown on it mm. not directly though but then they also learned that this is who Steve is mm. And um, how do I, ac how do we um, accept him as he is? Mm. And you know, pastors is one of those roles where, like, if you're a pastor, guys call you pastor. They, yeah. you, you they don't even call you Steve. Yeah, you They're lose like, your name. Yeah, you lose your name. Mm. And I was like, uh, I'm a pastor, you're a teacher. Do I call you teacher? I'm mm. Steve still, mm. right? So, mm. I will, and I was trying just to make sure that Steve doesn't get lost. Mm. Mm. And so I resisted some things, mm. um, which I later on mm. um, adjusted. Mm. But then the community also just embraced me mm. in, in a way that was that made me feel at home mm. and, and comfortable mm. and mm. Um, loved. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I was making fun in, in, in the morning when you say you are not Googleable. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, out there, outside of Madare, I, I, I had, are you known as pasta or is pasta something? Who knows you as pastor and then who knows you as Steve? Is, is I as never Steve introduce the myself as pastor, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I, I like, um, so unless I'm in environments where I have ministered before, mm. or p there's a connection to Madare, most mm. people just know me as Steve. Mm. Yeah, there are people who have no idea mm. I'm a pastor. And I know that might come across weird, right? But um, for me, I'm Steve first. Mm. I am Steve before mm. I am anything else, mm. Mm. yeah. Mm. What does that look like in terms of, I ask this also as someone who's seen you and also seen quite a lot of ministers where there is um, a bit of struggle with issues of honor and just talk to me about that and uh, the, 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 the titling and um, titling also entitlement, you know, just from a place of um, that identity, and I'm so glad you're saying you're fasting. Um, in the in in ministry, have you felt like you are a fit in what ministry and the church looks like, and um, in all of that conversation around honor and stuff like that? Where where, where is your bearing? Yeah. <laughs> I think any office yeah. comes with certain not just responsibility, mm. but there's a way you ought to carry yourself in honor right. of that office. Right. So, and, and that applies to being a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, that's almost anything else. Mm. That, 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 uh, that's an office that carries responsibility. Mm. And, and the more responsibility you have, mm. th there's a way, there's a conduct that is then required mm for the sake of that office mm. and mm. what it, because it stops being just you. Mm. You, be, you are now a representation of others mm. and it matters mm. and, and you cannot take that lightly. Mm. So I think that's where the place of honor mm. comes in. Mm. So you are 
a man of God, right? Mm -hmm. As you put it. Mm -hmm. But you are still a man. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, so there's a place where you, there's a balance of where I am Pastor Steve mm -hmm. and that reminds me mm -hmm. of my role. Mm -hmm. But I also am a father mm -hmm. and a friend. Mm -hmm. Uh, my husband, mm. I'm all these other things. Mm. I run an organization mm. and I cannot now take this pastoral mm -hmm. and carry it mm. into, into this. all these other offices. Mm. Yeah, I will not show up at my office um, that's outside church as pastor. Mm. I am, I will not go do a project yeah. somewhere as pastor. as pastor. I am going as Steve. As Steve and in my capacity as this person in this organization. Mm. Mm. So I think sometimes we take the highest office mm. and try mm. just labeling ourselves around. Yes, as that, because uh, this is digital. quote unquote my highest achievement. Mm. This mm. is my high position. Mm. And now you carry that into mm. the hotel, how mm. you treat the waiter mm. or the waitress, mm. or you know, you're like just, mm. uh, do you not know? Yeah. Mm. This is who I people. am. Yeah. But mm. in the inside, the, you're not their pastor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're a client. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing, and thank you for that reflection. <laughs> so, um, your time before moving into 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 youth vest, or rather, connecting your story to youth vest, also within within pastoral work, is there what? Uh, how does it look like other than care? Do you have to spend a lot more time preparing, um, maybe God's word? Uh, or teachings do you do do you need to do bible schooling do you like what 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 is it that makes a pastor be able to function at their best and for you what did that yeah. look, what did that and does that look like <laughs> for me of course i had the 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 privilege of just being raised in a pastor's house mm -hmm. and just seeing my mom in the word every day till mm. today like she mm. will always read the word mm. my dad um, mm. the same mm. just seeing those habits mm. that just you need mm. um, but Desta also played a role because Desta is a Christian university mm -hmm. and there are certain bible lessons mm. that are requirement mm. and then later on I was also able to to do some study so that train just under, understanding the basics mm of what Christianity is, mm. the word, mm. um, that is a requirement. Mm. Mm. Um, but the other thing, I try minister mm. the word from the word that I take in for myself. Right. For, for, for a long time, I used to prepare mm. for the sermon. Mm. And, and sometimes I would cheat, mm. sometimes I would miss it completely. Mm. Mm. And then I just, but, it, it, bec it can become very deceptive because mm. you are doing so many hours of study mm. to prepare for the sermon. Mm. Um, you think you have a relationship with God mm. that mm. you are taking in the word. Mm. And I think it's not just in the church, but any position of leadership mm. where you can easily serve the office, yeah. but the values and um, everything required, they are not, you're not they are not consistent mm. when you're outside of that office. Mm. Mm. So one of the things that I've learned is um, first to make sure I'm studying the word for myself, mm. whether I would preach this or mm. not. Mm. And so now a lot of what I would teach just flows mm. from that place. Mm. And mm. I think it's more authentic mm. and it carries more life. Mm. Yeah. And you've been able to minister to a lot of more places other than now what is like your primary base, you've had um, various other pastoral, your pastoral work has also expanded you, uh, has also expanded and you've been able to, wh where are some of the other places where um, you feel that has played? And also just to clarify, pastoral is not just about teaching, it's also about the work behind. Yeah. There's an administrative part of it, there's the care part of it, there's a strategy part of it. Uh, how has it looked like for you in in um, in in progression? So first, we uh, we have a team mm. so that they a lot of like the care and stuff like mm -hmm. things run and, right. and and we have a team who mm. um, takes care a lot of those things that you just mentioned the mm. admin mm. the care and mm. all that. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, I believe in once again raising leaders, leaders right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just giving them mm -hmm. that space so that things become better and mm -hmm. they constantly surprise me because mm -hmm. they do more mm -hmm. than I would have done. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, it's that also now allows me mm. to go and be able to speak mm. into other spaces. Mm. Mm. So I've done trips mm. outside of Kenya mm. um, for for the same. So mm. for me, the, <laughs> the the difference between pastoral work and development is mm. it's a very thin line, yeah. and a lot of times it's intertwined. Mm. Mm. So Im, I might be going to a university. Mm. Um, in the US to talk to students, mm. um, which I've done with Tiffany mm. a while back. I was not even a pastor then. Mm. Um, but when I'm talking about development, I'm talking about the value mm. of humans, mm. and I'm talking about justice, and mm. I'm talking about mm. um, how calling people to mm. make a difference, and just talking about that we are empowered mm and that should make the world a better place mm. which is very pastoral it's mm. just that i'm not using bible verses mm. so I've, I've done both in universities um, and in churches mm. Um, mm. in the u.s mm. um, zimbabwe mm. um, we've done ministry work in nepal mm. just with our partners hopes mm. promise mm. and mm. other guys mm. yeah and so now you also, now we can get into youth best. So you transition, no transition, you add. <laughs> yes. You add onto the plate um, youth best. Okay. Talk to me about that. <laughs> so youth best is now, it's, 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 so I'm pastor, mother worship center, um, I'm program director at Hope's Promise, mm. Kenya. Mm. And then, um, co-founder and ED, mm. current ED at Youth West. It's, it's a title that I hope to lose <laughs> once I have someone mm. to replace me mm. in Youth West. Mm. Um, but Youth West is really, those two words, the word vest means to empower, to clothe, mm. right? Mm. And for me, it's we need to clothe the next generation, um, especially those from the most vulnerable communities. Mm -hmm with leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the problem of Africa is not an issue of resource. We, yeah. we have a lot of resource. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of leadership. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, nations, communities, mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. rise and fall sure based on leadership. Mm -hmm. And my definition of leadership mm -hmm. is not necessarily even have people follow you. Mm -hmm. That's a part of it. Mm -hmm. But my definition of leadership is the ability to make something good happen mm. that would not have happened if you didn't do it. Mm. So how do we now, because when you think, when I ask people, mention a leader you know, a lot mm. of t people will be like, President Sujinani mm. and this mm. other person in this top mm. leadership space, mm. people rarely think about leadership in day-to-day -day mm. life, right? Mm. Mm. But my capacity to clear the table mm. and leave this clean mm. and organized mm. Be and better than it was mm. before I came there. Mm. Mm. That is what leadership looks like yeah. and has to look like. 90% mm. of our problems, when we say Nairobi is dirty, mm. it's not because Kanjo is not acting, it's because someone trashed. Mm. If that individual puts that trash in the right place, mm. Nairobi, the problem will be how do we remove these piles mm. from these places, mm. right? Mm. But that will solve. 90% of mm. the garbage issue that we have. Mm. Um, when we talk about our roads, mm. and, and, and you know what traffic is like mm. in Nairobi. In Nairobi. Yeah. It's not just that the roads are tiny, mm. it's because there's this driver who mm. decided, let me... Uh, um, I'm in a hurry more than everyone else. Yes, let mm. me cut in, or mm. let me stop and carry this person, mm. or let this person alight. Mm smack right in the middle of the road mm. if just people at that level began to do things right mm. we just begin to see a lot of change mm. and um leadership if 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 things don't work at the family level mm. my personal view is mm. the smallest unit of a society is not the individual mm. it's the family because mm. what the family is easily be that's that's a DNA mm. that we will carry. Mm. Mm. And so like, what does leadership look like at home? Yeah. 
um, for example, my mom placed such a premium on education. Mm. And so growing up, if you felt sick, you'd be like, wow, you are really sick. Put on your uniform, let's go to hospital. Then you go to school. If the doctor checks you out and feels like this medicine will keep you in school for two hours, school mm. and a lot of times you go to OC and just go back home mm. anyway mm. but he taught me like education is valuable because mm. there's a value she's placing on that and that's something that I learned yeah. at a family setting that mm. was her teaching me mm. as a leader mm. in our home mm. and so you begin a, a lot of I mean the story I've shared you are constantly hearing me refer mm. back to my parents or mm. my siblings mm. and relationships mm. it's because well, that's why I caught them mm. Mm. And so um, how do we devolve leadership mm. Mm. and just build capacity at that level mm. so that then the next generation mm. is able mm. to bring real change. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what Youth Fest does. So we work um, to build the capacity of families and communities mm. to create an empowering environment for their children. Mm. It, uh, is that part of the expression of that? Is it through programs? Is it through trainings? Yeah, so we have two programs. Mm -hmm. So we have one, it's called Ongoza Academy. Ongoza. Yeah, Ongoza, mm -hmm. and it's just mm -hmm. leadership. So we, mm -hmm. we, we teach leadership skills mm -hmm. um, to the kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other part is, we call it Kijani. Mm -hmm. And Kijani is Swahili for green. Mm -hmm. And uh, just something prosperous. Mm -hmm. So Kijani now works with the families and communities. Mm. How do we empower these spaces mm. so that then the parents and the communities mm. can come around this child, mm. create an empowering environment yeah. so that this child becomes the leader mm. that they ought to be. For, for both, just there's been a little into those. So for Kijani, for instance, when you say communities, it's, it's, this, this time is not just Madare. It's not just Madare. We've grown mm -hmm. beyond Madare mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Where are your you pin? Maps. <laughs> so we are doing, done. Uh -huh. um, we've done, so Madare, mm. um, Gashie, mm. which is Kiambu, mm. another different project in Kiambu. Mm. Um, we've done some work with Lepta mm. in Kilifi. Mm. Um, we've done some work in, and currently are still doing some work in Embu mm. and also Machakos and mm. a little bit in Moranga. Mm. And and uh, and Tarakanithi now and Tarakanithi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as th the biggest expression of 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 that empowering of communities, would it be through like bringing them together or taking resources to them? What what does that look like when you unpack it? So once again, it's very needs driven, mm. out of relationship, yeah. right? Mm. So for let's say they work in Tarakanithi, mm -hmm. they're current, we are currently working with about 200 farmers mm. who have come together under a dairy circle. Mm -hmm. So their thing is dairy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's brought them mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. We didn't gather them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what we are doing is we are helping the daily dairy circle build its systems and mm -hmm. structures mm -hmm for better pay mm. and just financing and mm -hmm. supporting that. So for mm -hmm. them, we are giving them technical assistance, yeah. but also some financing, mm -hmm. more on the operation side, so mm -hmm. computers mm -hmm. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. training the staff. Mm -hmm. And um, we're trying to build an app for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so that they're able to collect data and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now that translates to more income mm -hmm. for the families, because mm -hmm. our target is always families. Mm -hmm. And now if families with more income would ideally be able to increase the opportunities mm. that their kids have mm. to just the different things that mm. they need to mm. pursue. Mm. But now, but once we do that, our follow-up would be later on mm. coming with Ongoza and be like, can you talk to your kids yeah. about leadership? Mm. But right mm. now, our, that's, that's our entry point. Mm. Versus in... I love, love, love the rawness of even what the solutions you're providing are. Um, from um, when, when I study development and when I look at it, there are three or four things that you know keep evolving. Just how people centered, whatever intervention is, like it has to, you know, as you're saying, respond to needs. So that people centricity is something that you have at the core, but also systems thinking. Systems not just internally, like how if it's a little community how it is but as the an ecosystem mm. what are the various things that need to work for this one thing issue i mean in in, in for dignitas 
if it's education, it's teachers that need to be trained. However, other things also need to be yeah. <laughs> to be in place. So you either work through partnerships or you work through or part of your programs also responds to one or two other things around capacity, around resource, around yeah. nutrition, around, you know, like th there's many things. And as you're saying for community, as much as it needs, needs led, the ecosystem itself in, in, a very, in, a, in a particular environment just needs to be able to work. Have you found, and a beautiful thing I've heard you say also is that um, the re some of the, we, even with youth vests, a bit of the work that you've also done with like previous and ongoing um, organizations, they, you still work together. You still yes. work together with LEPTA to, you, through LEPTA for youth vest and uh, reverse and part of your pastoral work also connects with this. What would be your reflection around building an ecosystem? Like with an example, if 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 Madare is to just as Madare, if, if Madare as an ecosystem is to shift, what are those things that need to be in place? What would be the one thing that, if placed priority upon the most, would significantly shift the entire ecosystem? Leadership. Leadership. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of what I look, uh, think about. For example. So this is my goal. Mm. And just even looking back is, can this thing function mm. without the support mm. or whatever expertise? Yeah, mm. can it function, right? Mm. Can it lead itself? Mm -hmm. Can it become? And mm. that's one, but also does it raise a standard mm. so that once you are no longer as connected in this community, mm. has the leadership levels, so to speak, risen? Mm. How people mm. do schools here? Mm. Mm. Um, mm. how they treat their kids and their mm. parents. Mm. Has that increased, has that become better mm. when there's no more support? Mm. Are, are they more, um, are the kids performing better? Are they mm. getting better, more quality education mm. once you pull out? Mm. And, and that now, that's why you must raise mm. leaders. Mm. People who now take it upon themselves mm. to make good mm. happen. happen. I, I said this at the very beginning when we were starting, that the true legacy of a leader is how many other leaders it creates and how many other leaders um, take, their, their, take their shine through his life and, 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 and um, who are also positioned. So that's the point we were with when you, where, you're, where, you, where you spoke about um, the empowerment journey, uh, how you spoke about calling to justice, how you spoke about um, ensuring that the value of humans is seeing and, and, and being spotlighted. And you've worked with many people um, through programs you've led and through programs you've participated in. There, ha there have been many leaders who have also emerged and who are doing <coughs> tremendous things. Um, I'd love to hear about a few of them. Um, so we have a couple that I can share. Mm. I'm just trying to pick mm -hmm. um, on who. Mm. And it's also my firm belief that you do not accomplish anything alone, right? Sure. So things that I've been able to accomplish is because of relationships and people who've poured into my life. So it just flows on, right? Mm. So mm. They, I'm also able to pour into others. others. Yeah. And then, so my accomplishments mm. become the accomplishments of those ones Absolutely. and of those, so just it's, it's, mm. it becomes a community. Mm. Mm. And um, very interlinked. So we have um, Jay King, mm. who is now leading um, Lepta, mm. took over, mm. um, still um, one of my closest friends. Mm. And he also works for an organization called Madare Children's Education. Mm. And um, he, he runs that. Mm -hmm. It caters to orphaned kids and vulnerable kids mm. um, who initially came mm. um, from Madare mm. and is doing a sterling job mm. um, with that. Yeah, we'll put, he's one of the people we'll have as a guest, so we'll put the link to his, his se 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 session right yeah, here. That, because that's a story that needs to be heard. And just yeah. seeing his impact in the community mm. in Madare and beyond mm. is, is amazing. Mm. Just seeing him speaking to very serious situation sometimes mm. and bring the escalation things that affect our whole community mm. but also speak to individuals mm. and just lift them up mm. um, and just give them direction yeah it's amazing mm. um, we have um, her name is Gloria mm. Gloria is currently 
based in Scotland mm -hmm. um, where she's working. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping she comes back to take over the work, mm. the Youth Rest, and, and run this. All right. And she's actually now also now a co-founder of mm. Youth Rest. Mm. So I've been working with her mm. um, partially, mm. but, but she's definitely a part of this. Mm. And, and, and Gloria was one of our first students that we trained yeah. when we started the leadership program mm. back then in Lepta. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because it was just Jaking and myself mm. doing the training. Mm. Um, mm. And some of the classes we had included computers mm. and photography. Mm. And we really didn't have the, com the, the equipment. I think we just had one computer, mm. if, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And those were the two subjects other than the leadership skills that I was teaching. Mm. So Gloria chose those two subjects. Mm. So I was teaching her photography mm. and I was teaching her computers. Mm. And so we, we became friends. Mm. I got to know her mm. a little bit more. And as she was transiting from high school mm. through our program, mm. she ended up working at Dignitas mm. as one of, um, I think she was a receptionist when mm. she started out. Mm. But we are still continuing this leadership journey. Mm. Um, she's part of the team that was then now helping us serve mm -hmm. um, in Madare, mm. in church and stuff like that. Mm. Then she decides to go to university and mm. you're just having conversation mm. and she ended up and was just based on out of conversation and interaction mm. i thought she would be amazing mm. if she did um, public relations mm -hmm. and so i mentioned that to her mm. and she had not really heard about what that would look like mm. in, in in university mm. so she looks into the course and she thinks like this this is a perfect fit right mm. and she goes on mm. and does that mm. so she's studying working mm. and she just grows mm. and just becomes this amazing person of influence mm. um very diligent mm. and mm. ended up working with her on a couple of projects mm. in dignitas mm -hmm. and then she now went to do her masters in scotland mm. um, finished that and she's still working there mm. and i'm hoping one day she comes back to continue with mm. the work mm. but part of the thing that a reason i mentioned this is mm. gloria is I remember later, probably mm. maybe seven years later, when mm. she was still working at Dignitas, mm. um, part of her work was mm. um, taking photographs and telling stories, mm. right? Mm. And, and just social media. Mm. And she was like, you know, you taught me photography. Mm. I, I wasn't mm. really a professional mm. photographer or anything. Mm. I was just giving what I had. Mm. I was also learning from Google mm. before I teach her, yeah. right? But just seeing how that simple conversation and interaction mm. actually becomes her reality. Mm. And then through that and her position in Dignity, she's able to affect and tell stories for thousands and thousands of children mm. Mm. was just amazing. And mm. I'm really looking forward to that. Mm. So we have people like that, mm. um, people in politics, mm. um, people doing business, mm. just in different spaces. Mm. Mm very amazing that um i mean just hearing I, as i say I, I, the authentic leader the true leader is the one who you know others also become a leader <coughs> as a result of and uh, part of how you define leadership is making good happen yeah um you continue to make good happen um through various other ways you ventured as you say even in in business in entrepreneurship in politics how how has the landscape changed for you over the last you know like when pandemic hit the country and um did did it affect how you do good you know how how does good look like for you when 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 the you know when the pandemic was happening during that period how what are your reflections around that period and how it, it impacted and maybe has continued to impact leadership development, making good happen through development, social impact. Yeah. So it, it, the pandemic um, reaffirmed something that I've mentioned that I hold true, mm. that family is the center. Because mm. everything shut down, mm. the government shut down, mm. Um, business shut down, mm. people were working from home, mm. there was no traffic, mm. the only, even churches mm. were shut down. Mm. The only thing that remained mm. was actually family. So mm. everyone was supposed to be mm. at, at home. Because mm. that's just the center. Mm. Um, when, when, when things go south, mm. that's, that's the only thing mm. that still mm. holds true and remains. Mm. So 
any intervention that does not make a significant difference in family. within that household, mm. within that space, mm. um, will eventually mm. not bring us into mm. the future that we'd want to see for Africa. Mm. Um, just a quick example that I, I had referenced to before with mm. my mother and her value for education. Mm. I've, I work with schools mm -hmm. and we are trying to improve quality and mm -hmm. just do projects around that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also wondering and asking myself, what does education look like in this home? Mm -hmm. What values does this mother hold towards mm -hmm. education? Mm -hmm. And what does this house, maybe mm -hmm. that does not have electricity, how can this, do they have books? How mm -hmm. does this child study in the evening when mm. schools are closed what mm. does education look like mm. what what does her mother or her father mm. comment mm. about education and people who are educated mm. and not just that but um what's their values when it comes to politics what's mm. their values when it comes to money and mm. wealth mm. what do they hold true when it comes to nutrition yeah. and health because mm. that's where things have to change because mm. if we change if we get it right there mm then we get it right out, mm. um, elsewhere. Mm. And so what, that's one of the things that um, sh just got re really reaffirmed mm. for me. Mm. It might be the best schools, mm. but mm. what happens mm. when they get shut down? Mm. And um, there's, of course, transition now happening mm. with how we work. Mm -hmm. And I'm just constantly thinking, how do we then bring that into the household mm. how do we make families mm. more empowered mm. when it comes to family you know remember we were kids we used to have <coughs> small farms and mm. people who talk about i forget the name because there was farming for like cash crops mm. and just different mm. types of mm. farming mm. Um, but there was just mm. that farming where you have the basics mm. to you but mm. then they get lost now mm. you farm to sell yeah. and then you have to buy food mm. how do we begin to change that so mm. that nutri the, the families have more control when it comes to nutrition mm -hmm. for instance mm -hmm. and they're empowered mm. to bring a difference so that's one of the primary shifts mm. that mm. covid has brought yes covid mm. has brought mm. and has highlighted to be true mm. and mm. we continue just to to focus on that so in every environment mm. we work mm. um, let's say if we are talking about the farmers in tarakanidi serene Mm -hmm. dairy milk mm. we'll build the system in the office mm -hmm. but we'll also look like how are they administrating their cow mm. at home mm. without that computer that mm. we have in the mm. office that, and that's building their capacity that's there. really powerful yeah and <laughs> but you also now a family man <laughs> yes uh tell me about that a bit more so you and you mentioned on your first baby in, in the story but but how is how is how is steve the family man who is who is who is in the family? So we have 15 kids, mm -hmm. um, three bio, mm -hmm. um, 12 adopted. Mm -hmm. But the 12 adopted are now older. Like mm -hmm. one is um, officially a grandfather because <laughs> the oldest one has a baby, mm -hmm. and then either college, working, or high mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. So they've transited out because these were kids that we took in. Mm -hmm. Um, and your family, mm. um, and this is through Hope's Promise. Mm -hmm. But now they are old enough, they are, mm. they've begun to move out. Mm. So now it's just the three mm. youngest mm. bio kids that I still have mm. at home. Mm. It was a steep learning curve for mm. me mm. and for my wife mm. when we started, because now back then we just had like a what, six or five year old, mm. and then suddenly you've adopted mm. a 15 year old teenager. Mm who will walk away when you're talking to them and slam the door and you're like, I'm What's not ready. On? I mm. am not ready mm. for this, right? Mm. Mm. Um, and so we learned a lot. It mm. stretched us mm. in, in many ways. Mm. But we also continue just to completely fall in love with them mm. and just um, try to the best as we can. Parenting is, is, is not easy. Family, life is... I think it's a true test mm. of, of, of a person's character. Mm. Mm. And you were tested. <laughs> <laughs> you were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are some of the things that they have become? Like especially the ones you brought, uh, the, 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 the ones <coughs> you brought in. So, the, the, so my wife and I took the ones that were slightly younger. So now we have okay. the older ones that my parents have brought in. And so we... we um, some of them are still in college, mm -hmm. but also now 
learning to do business mm. and um, side hustles. Mm. So some of them are doing, one is doing agriculture, mm. the other one is studying computer studies. Mm. So they are all over. Mm. Um, one of them is into, wants to become a chef, mm. and that's what, that's a course that they are studying. Mm. Um, another one becomes wants to become a fashion designer. We mm. have a plumber, mm. so it's, it's just really neat mm. to we have see. a sports person. Yes, we have a sports person, mm. and um, that one is just yeah really excelling. His name is Sami, mm. and Sami has special needs. He has mm. um, really serious um, dyslexia, mm. and it affects um, his ability to read mm. and to write. Mm. But he ended up going into sports mm. through the school mm. that we went to. He had an amazing teacher then called Vincent, mm. and who they still work with, mm. who introduced him to sports mm. at a competitive level. Mm. He became a part of um, Special Olympics. So mm. Special Olympics is the Olympics version mm. of people with special needs. Mm. So Sami joined that mm. and ended up representing the country a couple of years mm. back, um, mm. he was doing cycling. Mm. Uh, I think he got the silver, mm. which was huge. Mm. And um, he was That's the youngest really in the Kenyan team. Mm. Uh, and he was the flag bearer. So mm. he, he was the one who the president handed the flag over to him. And askers are just watching like, ah, uh, this is our child, mm. you know, this child. Mm. But just seeing how family mm. makes a difference. Mm. Um, and now he's the... He ended up becoming, he's finished high school mm. um, recently, just a few months back. Mm. He ended up becoming the Nairobi representative mm. of the Special Olympics mm. um, as students and just the members. But just recently, again, um, they had a, an election happening in South Africa, mm. and now he's the Africa representative. Awesome. Yeah, yeah mm. for Special Olympics. Mm. And he's just, um, he's young. Mm. Um, still struggling with dyslexia, mm. but now he's finding his place. Mm. Um, he wants to, he's very good in art mm. and drawing, so mm. we are trying to see is that something that he can pursue. Mm. But he also wants to run. Mm. Um, he actually practice, practices wow. with Wamanyala, right? Wow. So I'm like, he's the one who introduces us, like, yeah, this is my friend, mm -hmm. um, and, and he just wows us. Mm -hmm. But that's just one example. Mm -hmm. The other example mm -hmm. would be for one of our other kids who was really, really struggling mm -hmm. with um, uh, really delayed milestones. Mm -hmm. And when we brought this child in, um, they, they couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. um, and it was an issue of nutrition then, mm -hmm. but we didn't know, so we mm -hmm. take them to the whole scene, like all the like my parents are there just trying to figure out mm. what's what's happening mm. this child how can we get this child treated mm. so we bring them into the home mm. and here uh, she has this special apparatus to help her walk mm. but she never gets to use it because the moment she comes in she finds the other kids who came in earlier and they're just like, why are you not walking? And they are holding her hands and helping her walk. And just the change. And now she's, um, what? She's about maybe 17, 18. Mm. Um, in a school where she's, she has special needs, so she's learning, she's in a spe the special needs unit. Mm. But she's learning to take care of herself. Mm. She can um, do the basics mm. and learn. She's mm. happy. Mm. Um, she has dreams and mm. she's pursuing them. Mm. So just seeing, like it works. Mm. Yeah, it mm. works. Family works, love works. In development, those two are things that you can't, I mean, they are often not even included in the, in the, in the offer, in the bouquet of offerings <laughs> that, that, you know, but, but truly, you know, it's development through relationship, do development via love. Yes. And development via like just family support. Mm -hmm. In the midst of all of that, one of the buzzwords, it's not a buzzword, it's, it's the reality in, in, um, in development is the whole issue of diversity, inclusion, uh, equity, belonging. And what, whilst in, 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 in the development world, those are buzzwords and those are things that people are you know, struggling to get even measures and indicators towards for you and the work you've done, even just through the example you've 
you've given right now at, uh, at Hope's Promise, these are lived realities. You have as diverse individuals and interests as, as they come, you know, you have to create an enabling environment for, for persons, you know, who are differently abled and, and, um, and work with milestones that are probably slower than the rest. But, you know, you have to cater for that reality of diversity. You, you have to uh, ensure that they are somehow included in the bigger plan yes. <laughs> of, of things and create an enabling environment for them to belong. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so for, um, I think it's a case study <laughs> to, 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 to behold where those are not necessarily the buzzwords that you use in, 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 in profiling any of the ventures that you are involved with, not youth ventures, not, um, I mean, not youth best, not, not, not hopes promise, not even left up, but those are lived realities. <laughs> like it's a way of life. Yeah. Um, what are some of those things that you see out there that 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 are perhaps hailed on the most? Um, and you've already mentioned a few, like love and care, yeah. but that are hailed on the most um, that that you feel aren't the main priority. And what are some of the things that are aren't given as much highlight that that should actually be part of the ingredient? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge in the development space is connected to numbers because mm. you need to report yeah. to donors mm. and um, for donors it's they are giving you money and people might not say it as much but it's like what does this one dollar translate to in terms of impact mm. and change the right? bottom line yeah, yeah. with one dollar you yeah. can educate a girl. With one dollar, you can provide, <laughs> you know, X number of sanitary towels to X number of girls. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it does. The it bottom line is usually <coughs> Yes, that's numbers. how people measure. That's mm. how the world measures. Mm. But if, let's say, you deliver a sanitary towel to a girl who maybe is also facing other issues, these kids are just counting the dollar, how mm. many people have I reached, mm. it does not necessarily translate into change and transformation, transformation mm. which is the true goal mm. of development. Mm. It, it, things have to become better mm. without that intervention mm. um, eventually. Mm. So I think just figuring out how do I report mm. in a way that is legitimate, mm. where I'm not lying, mm. But translating transformation and change into numbers that now would make sense mm. to the donors mm. is, is one of the spaces that um, things that we need to look at in this space. Mm. Just maybe changing the language mm. so that then as they give, mm. they also understand this child being happy, mm. this child having peace mm. is part of this child feeling safe. Because how do you count? Mm that this child is mm. feeling safe mm. and they were in a space that is not. And what is safe for this child might be, what is safe for different children is very different. So yes. it's just ensuring that it's also customized to each. Exactly, mm. and reporting back mm. and just bridging the world because mm. it's two different worlds. Mm. And like I mentioned before, sometimes you want to do good, you want to help, mm. but the picture you have of what that should look like is what that, not what that person needs. Mm. So I think there's, there's that divide. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad like you now have more conversations happening around that. Mm. What does that look like? Yeah. But I'm also very, very glad and privileged mm. that I have partners who understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we have a relationship where they're like, what is a real need mm. and can you report on that mm. and, and and how do we intervene mm. that makes the whole difference yeah and um as you mentioned that one of the things i'm thinking about is how you, you you're saying connecting different worlds connecting the world of bottom line and connecting the world of impact um without the, there are people who, who get it and I, I want your reflection on how do we do good while making profit? Or how do we make profit to also be part of what do good? 
<laughs> make good happen looks like? How do we bridge the ever rising financial demands and the need therefore to make profit and to make you know income with the fact that you know um, needs will always be there that require for those ones who priv are privileged or have resources to 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 do good you know constantly what what's your reflection on what that um, sweet spot is um it's a sad reality mm. that in many areas and in many cases, it appears that the level of poverty is actually increasing. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can isolate ourselves because I don't live in that part of the world or mm. I don't live in that area mm. or in that location and, and my world is different and here things are clean and happy. Mm. But eventually, um, these two worlds will join, mm. right? Mm. So next, 10 years from now when I've built my business, mm. just from a very raw perspective, I will need clients, mm. right? Mm. And, and, and if these guys don't have money, mm. who will I sell to? Exactly. Right? So there's mm. just that reality that our worlds are very connected mm. in ways much more than you'd expect. I think one of the biggest shifts that we are going to experience, we used to have uh, the six degrees of separation. separation. Mm. I feel like in the next probably seven, eight years, it will be more like three degrees of separation, mm. right? Because there's social media, there's mm. access. I can, mm. there's, the world is much more connected. Mm. And um, so what's happening in Madare can easily begin to affect something happening in Nyeri. True. Much more easily, because these two guys are talking. Mm. And like before, mm. like people are much more connected. Mm. And I think, that's one, but the other thing that's an issue for Africa is we probably have what 60, 70 percent of the population is young people, mm. and the majority of who mm. do not have enough financing. Mm. Mm. And that one day they will need to sit at the table, yep. and we will not be able to hold it back. Mm. So I look at the next generation as probably something that might become the biggest headache. Mm. But I choose to look at them as our greatest potential. Because if we get it right with them, mm. Africa will just explode with creativity, with mm. wealth, mm. with peace and stability, mm. like nothing that the world has experienced mm. before. Mm. Mm. Powerful. Just reflecting on that and thinking that that's, that's what you live, you know? Hashtag next gen, hashtag make good happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and how much you've also just been able to highlight the, the journey and the many elements that you're connected to currently with Madari Worship Center, with NIOTH, with, with LEPTA community, with Hope's Promise, with um, Dignitas itself, and also with, as you say right now, Youth Best. Um, when you're not in the middle of doing all this good for community, um, you mentioned you know steve as the man you know what <laughs> what are the things that now excite you other than other than uh, uh the things outside of work and passion what how would your what's your typical fun day looking road like trips. road I trips love, i just love, love travel i love to travel <laughs> yeah and i love my camera yes right <laughs> yeah, yeah so I, would, um, I think road trips just allow me to to see yeah. and to be in open spaces mm. that are less noisier than mm. Nairobi. Mm. Um, mm. So I, I just love being out in mm. nature. Mm. I'm not like a hiking person and stuff, so mm. I need my car. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I, I really enjoy mm. the road trips. I, do, mm. I think you just see different parts of the world, mm. and different parts of Kenya. Perspective changes. Yes, yeah. mm. and then my camera. Because mm. I also think there's so much beauty all mm. around us, mm. whether it's people, mm. Um, nature, mm. the sunrise mm. or the sunset, mm. there's so much beauty mm. around us mm. and I think that my camera allows me to capture those moments mm. and um, highlight those stories mm. and just share that because I think we live in an amazing, amazing country. Do you blog? I, I try to be active on social media mm. every so often. Mm. So I'll I'll post a lot, mm. yeah, mm. depending on mm. the season. Mm. Like I mentioned earlier, I mm. tend, I, 
I tend to hide my story yeah. and to be behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, but um, there are moments when I'm like, these stories need to be heard. Mm. And so I share them on mm. social media. Mm. Mm. And um, as you are also a very private person, you've, you're also very private about your children, especially your bio children. Is there any that takes after you, like character-wise? I think different different dimension of them. Even some of the adopted ones, yeah. you can tell like this one is just this is me, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but the younger ones, I think, carry different. My daughter will her love for books and mm. reading mm. Uh, mm. thing. Mm. Uh, my son mm. is hard for giving. Mm. Like he's like constantly thinking, oh, mm. how can we help? Mm. What can we do to make a difference? Mm. My youngest will try imitate me preaching mm. and stuff like that. So mm. I think just different mm. dimensions. What are the ages currently? Um, so in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> so we have what um, 12. Okay, now going on to 13. Mm. Then we have eight years old mm. going on to nine, mm. and then we have going on to five. Oh wow, that's uh, so a, a, a teenager, yes, ish, yes. Uh, preteen, and uh, and and, and de de definitely they also raise each other. So maybe oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 the African way. Yeah, you, you have to, and I learned this from my brother-in-law. Yeah. Like when they have a discipline issue with their eldest, eldest, yeah. They would call the younger one to watch yeah. so that this path she's taken <laughs> you will not take yeah. <laughs> so i've kind of learned that yeah. from them really nice yeah, so that then you, you build their capacity to yeah. take care of each other because yeah wonderful so looking back and then looking forward what 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 would you tell the steve who was in karangata you know as you look back now and then as you look forward, what what would you tell that, th that Steve? To go for it more. Mm. Um, I think the potential we have is incredible. Mm. And just to go for, to really just go for it, not hold back. Mm. And I also feel like we are we live in a space mm. where younger people are still able to do more. Mm. So I would have told myself to, even at that age, mm. go for more. Mm. Not just my studies, mm. just all around. Whether it's traveling, mm. whether it's trying to start off projects, mm. it's still possible. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So such that like age is your currency, use it. Yes. Especially when you're young, yeah? Yes, use mm. it, use it, mm. use it. And, mm. um, because people tend to think, because I'm young, I don't have resources, so I can't do. Mm. I still don't have too much resources, mm. so I'm mm. like, oh, mm. there's no difference. I could have done what I'm doing yeah. now. <laughs> it doesn't quite change then, later. Right? If anything, yeah. responsibilities and other things exactly. keep piling up and adding more. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And um, if there's anyone you'd recommend to, to whose story, um, I think you've, you, 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 you've said one or two, whose story needs to be featured and highlighted more or they've probably been as like just as you working more in the background but you feel like a bit of their work in, in social good in social um yeah basically in social impact and do who's doing good where they are and making good happen who do you who do you say come and sit here wow <laughs> that's that's a tough one in the sense because it's relationships that are built mm. um, are much older than some of them mm. Mm. but they've caught up and gone beyond me mm. and I love that because that's what mm. it's that's supposed to happen mm. like that mm. so I, I, I'm not so sure I would know who to pick mm. but there's people that I feel like I've committed myself to mm. in the sense that I want to see them succeed mm. Mm. And I'm determined not to get there alone. Mm. And mm. I'll always, mm. like they've become a part of yeah, my yeah. family. Mm. So some of them would be some of the kids that you've adopted mm. Mm. Um, who've uh, finished school. Mm. And then some of them have people that I've mm. worked with mm. over mm. the past few years. So I, I have like maybe five people mm. that I would think of. Mm. Yeah, and I wouldn't know which one. Which one, <laughs> yeah. To pick. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll we'll sidebar 
and then you let me know then you can reach out <laughs> <laughs> and along along the course of time maybe their stories can also get featured whether here or wherever else there, where there is um, wonderful storytelling happening um, I don't know if you have any final closing words, uh, but thank you for, for I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to close. So just thank you for sharing your story, for, you know, being, trusting the platform as well to just come and share your story and documenting your own legacy, because it's not just yours. It's, um, I think from what I've, I'm, I'm picking, you, what you've been able to connect the dots of the past with the present and most importantly also the future. Um, the story of your, uh, just where you come from, your background and, and, and your parents, you know, and how much it has inspired who you are and what your own life has become and the experiences that they give you while, while raising you and the home environment that they created. That past is so important in what you've been able to do in the recent and ongoing present um, with all the different ventures and avenues and initiatives and work and, and, and places that you're doing good, but also you've been able to connect a lot of that with the future. Mm -hmm. And that by itself is very amazing because um, as you say, it's, it's a hard choice to even think about who to profile the most <laughs> about, you know, the future, which, which I think is a true emblem of a, of a remarkable leader. So thank you for being a remarkable leader and thank you for sharing your platform here. I give it to you for the closing words. <laughs> um, in closing, I'd want to say the future is brighter than anything that we can imagine. The future of Africa, especially. It's, it's, it's brighter and better than anything that has been sold to us or even the stories that we've told ourselves. And I feel like this is a generation. The next generation will change it completely. So my call is constantly to, in your own way, make sure you're empowering someone who comes after you. And then number two, wherever you are at, make good happen. Look at things that are not happening in, in the life of an individual, in, in, in the environment, in your company, organization, school, wherever, community, family, and step up and make it happen. Don't wait for anyone else to do it. That's, that's what leadership looks like and that is what will make Africa what it ought to be. Mm -hmm.